What is my least favorite crochet project? Okay, you know what? I do have one for this. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering your questions while crocheting. First question I'm gonna get out of the way that probably everyone's asking, yes, I did get my haircut. I did it. I kept seeing pictures of Renona Ryder from the 90s and I'm like, I'm gonna do it. And then it happened. Quite frankly, I feel like I even want to go shorter. A few days ago, I posted on my Instagram and I posted on uh, my YouTube channel to ask me questions because I finally reached 10,000 subscribers. So thank you everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed and you like sewing, crocheting, thrifting, and, and crafting, why not hit the subscribe button? With all these new people, I thought, you know what? I should do another Q&A because it's been uh, a while. What I will be crocheting today is just the beginning of a project. If you watched my last crocheting a vest, I did mention I wanted to do a tutorial. That's what I'm working on today is a little bit of the tutorial, just, you know, getting it started. And if you're interested in the color of yarn I'm using, it is the Craft Smart Value yarn and the color is clay. The first question, why did you decide to do YouTube? I don't know how many of y'all know this, but I did actually go to film school and I graduated 10 years ago. Oh my God, that's been so long. And my goal was I was gonna go into the art department and move to Toronto and do films. And then I went to Toronto, you know, for a few little gigs here and there and realized I hate the city. I just hate city life in general. I like driving my car with minimal to no traffic. After that, I got a bunch of just random jobs just so I could pay for the education that I was not using. Then that kind of came to a point where I, think I started really watching like thrifting YouTube videos back in, I think, 2016. And then around that time, I'm like, oh, I should start uh, my YouTube channel. And I, I literally want to shake 2016 Michelle and be like, why did you stop YouTube at that time? Do you know how far along you could have been right now? I think I posted like three videos. They're not there anymore because they are cringy. And I think maybe one day I would like to do a video where I rewatch my first YouTube videos. Back in 2019, I started Started doing YouTube again. I think I would post once a month. I had a theater job, so I was there like five, six days a week. So I had no time really to film and edit. And at that time, like my filming and editing process was like much longer than it would be now. And then, uh, you know, 2020 rolls around and uh, the panorama happens. So I was, uh, I wouldn't say stuck at home, but kinda. This is, this is a sign for me to uh, really start focusing on YouTube. And that's essentially what I did is I tried to post, I think at the time, one video a week. They weren't great videos because I mainly do like thrifting content, which you probably are aware of, because I really did like doing thrifting content. And uh, you know, because everything was shut down, couldn't go to a thrift store. Couldn't film a thrift with me or a thrift haul or anything because they were closed. Did resort to driving around and finding stuff on the road, which I found some pretty cool stuff. You know, I just kept building up my following and then eventually last year at this time which would have been August 2021 I moved back home ended a relationship and really buckled down on that YouTube thing I mean I guess long story short I just love editing I love filming I've been filming since I was probably 12 years old with one of those big huge VHS cameras but I always liked it I always wanted to do something in it you know what I don't want to give up my passion of filming and editing and like creating creating content. And so yeah, I'm just like, you know what, let's give YouTube a try. And uh, here I am. That was a really long answer. But you know, I wanted to give you kind of a gist of uh, where I came from and uh, how I got here. So I got like two questions from the same person. So I'll just answer them together. The first question is, what am I dressing up for Halloween? I don't know yet. I'm not 100% sure yet. I do have a crochet project that I'm really excited for for the month of October. But for costume wise, not 100% sure yet, but I will be doing something. And then the other part of it was, would I also do a pumpkin head costume in over the garden wall style? I actually kind of already did that. My sister wanted a pumpkin head last year, so I had made her that. I actually made the head and I watched uh, Rachel Maxey's tutorial on how to do that so I could do it properly for her. And then the other question was, what is the story behind your channel name? This one is, is really out there. I was really into collaging back in, I believe, 2013, 2014. What I would do is I would get magazines that I had and I would just cut up photos and and collage. Didn't really last long. There was a, an Abe Lincoln hat and I had cut that out. And then I had also cut out a photo of a dinosaur. And uh, somehow the hat 
ended up on the dinosaur's head and I'm like, huh, that's a fancy dinosaur right there. And then I drew a photo of fancy dinosaurs having a party because right above my workstation in the garage was an array of toy dinosaurs. Cause I grew up in the nineties and every child pretty much had toy dinosaurs in the nineties. And then uh, my one friend that I was hanging out with at the time were like, oh, we should start a band. And, and I'm just like, oh, we should name it Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. We never really started a band at all, but uh, that's where the name came from. And then I'm like, I'm gonna make this my Instagram handle. That was, I believe, 2015 I did that. So that's how the name came to be. I got a lot of questions that have a multiple questions in one question, so that, that's great. I will answer them all. Are there any crafts you're interested to try or learn? I would love absolutely love to make myself my own rug. I would love to have like the rug machine where you just like, you hold it like a machine gun and you just, you use yarn and I have abundance of yarn. That's something that I would love to do. I would also love to get into stained glass. I think that's probably a pretty expensive hobby to have due to the fact that, uh, you know, you gotta buy glass and you gotta buy all the stuff that comes with it, but I would love to do stained glass. And then another hobby that I would love to try, it's not really a hobby, it's more, uh, I need the money for it and I want to get myself a knitting machine. Cause although I do not knit. I would love to have a knitting machine. I think that would be super fun. What music do I listen to? I listen to a lot of different things. Currently uh, Muse just released a new album so I've been listening to that. Some of the songs kind of remind me of older songs that they've had which you know I, I do love Muse. Favorite bands are My Chemical Romance and Fall Out Boy. I also like Bring Me the Horizon. There's a lot of bands that I do like. A lot of them like stem from like you know 2007 my early emo days and then even now I've, I've gotten into Taylor Swift which I never thought I would into that music now. And I also like Dolly Parton. I am literally all over the place. How does your sister style compare to yours since uh, y'all seem to thrift a lot together? How do I describe how my sister dresses? All black all the time. Here's the thing is that I would probably wear things that she would wear but she would never wear anything that I would wear. We like a lot of the same bands and TVs, movies, all that kind of stuff. What I'm wearing she would never wear. She also hates faux wood paneling so like my whole room she doesn't like. So we're complete opposites, but we're also like the same in in a sense, I guess. My next question is, is there something that you wished you'd never bought from a thrift store? Absolutely. Nothing like, oh, it's haunted. I wish I never got it. It's more clothing wise, especially since you can't try things on anymore. It's usually shirts, to be honest. It's usually shirts. A lot of shirts that I'm like, yeah, this will fit me. And then I bring them home and I'm like, this does not fit me. It is way too small. I'm never going to wear it. What is your favorite place to buy yarn online? I don't buy yarn online, mainly because because I don't know what I'm getting. I like to go to a store. Also, I don't like paying shipping and handling fees and all the best yarn seems to come from the States. So that's just like more money that I don't really have. I always buy my yarn at Michael's mainly because I like the colors they have. The pricing is great. They have a coupon. You know, you gotta go where there's coupons and they always have the yarn that I want in stock. So say I'm making this and I run out of yarn, I know there's a 99% chance that it's gonna be there unless everyone buys the color. Okay, so this one is a doozy. There's a few questions in here. I'm going to do my best to answer them all. What is my favorite crochet creation? Hellfire sweater. No need to discuss. It's amazing. I love it and I can't wait for fall to wear it. What is my least? What is my least favorite crochet project? Okay, you know what? I do have one for this. This would be the strawberry cardigan that I had made last year. And it was funny because I had upcycled a sweater and put strawberries on it. Then I took it apart and then I redid it again. And I just don't really like it. I think it's because it was a sweater and I didn't wash the yarn properly because you can wash yarn. Not in a washing machine. Don't put yarn in a washing machine, but like in a tub, you can soak it and restore it to like its original state. I didn't do that. And I also used a really big stitch. I used a double crochet, but I probably should have used like a, you know, a single crochet or a half double crochet. Uh, because of that, it just turned out way, way, way too big. I really want to redo that sweater because I haven't worn it because it's just, it's just way too big. Usually I love oversized stuff, but this is just too oversized. Do I tend to pile up whips? I had to look up that word because I've never heard it before, but it is work in progress. Usually when I start a project, I like to finish the project before I start another project, except for the one project that I am currently sitting on. I sit on a, uh, an old school sewing box. This I haven't finished, I guess. I'll just quickly show you. This is color changing yarn. It turns purple in the sun, but I ran out of it and they no longer sell it in the store. I've just left it in here until I'm ready to do something with it again. The last part of this question is how did you start crocheting and sewing and who taught you? No one really taught me how to sew. I think my mom, she showed me like the basics of how to use a sewing machine, but she does more hand sewing. I'm, I don't really do a lot of hand sewing. Crocheting, I think my grandma, she gave me my first crochet hook, which was an old one of hers. 
hers because she didn't crochet anymore. Unfortunately, she didn't teach me this way of crocheting. She taught me the, I can never pronounce it right. It's not Tuscany. Tunisian way of crocheting, which is kind of like knitting where you put a bunch of like loops on your hook and then you take them all off. That's how I learned how to crochet and I was wondering why none of my crochet projects would turn out the way that I wanted them to because I wasn't doing it like this. And then my Oma, probably like seven years ago, she had given me a bunch of crochet hooks. She also gave me a ton of fabric, a ton of like old cool vintage fabric, which I can't find. I was kind of hoping in that one video of like me looking through all my old fabric stash, I'd find it. And then she did give me a, a bucket of yarn. This bucket of yarn, there's um, all these squares in here that she made. Also, it's so funny. If I smell it, it smells like my Oma's house. And my Oma's house, unfortunately, had burned down 10 years ago. If I smell this, it smells like her house. So that's why I try to keep it contained in here so I can always smell it. <laughs> I know, I'm weird. But she had made a bunch of these rectangle squares and I really want to make a project out of them. Unfortunately, there's not enough yarn in here to finish it. So I have to like figure out how I want to do it. There's also a bunch of dog hair on here because she had a, a pug dog. I love pugs because they're cute. 2012 and 2013, I was crocheting a little bit and then I kind of stopped crocheting and I really picked it back up last year. I'm in love with it and I haven't stopped. It's it's just something that's like nice and relaxing that I can just sit and watch TV. And normally when I'm crocheting something like this, I'm watching uh, currently 1990s to early 2000s Disney Channel slash Family Channel movies because that's what I'm into now. Did anyone inspire you to start your YouTube channel? If so, who? Rachel Maxey, she's like a big influence on me. A combination of a bunch of different YouTubers that I watched and thought, you know what? I should try. And uh, here I am and I'm really glad I made that choice because I love making content. Where did I get my style from? Oof, I really do like grandpa core where it's, you know, like old man shirts and dressing like an old man. I have so many old man jackets, so many old man sweaters that I really want to wear. And that probably comes from my grandpa when he passed away. My mom got all his like clothes and stuff like that in these old big steamer trunks. And I found a few of my favorite items in there. And then again, like Stranger Things, Joyce Byers, I mean like striped shirts, that's, that's a core thing. Anything Northern Reflections, I love that brand. Kind of sometimes based on what I watch. Years ago when the first season of The Chilling Avengers of Sabrina, I watched maybe one and a half seasons until it got into like a musical and then I'm like, I'm out. I really liked her style because it was like very 1960s, but it was set like, you know, modern day. So I bought a lot of skirts, a lot of turtlenecks. I think that's where the turtlenecks come from. So it's just a combination of like a bunch of different things that I was into and the clothes that I've kept over time and they just kind of work their way into outfits, I guess. Next part of this one, do I have any kids? Absolutely not. And I don't know if I'll ever have any because I don't know if I want any. Also like that ties into the whole thing of if I wanted kids, I probably would have to start dating somebody and I don't really want to date anybody because it's just too much work and I'd rather make YouTube videos for y'all than uh, to spend time with someone. Do I make things for myself or do I sell them? So I used to have an Etsy. I usually just make things for myself if like a friend of mine or something like that wants to pay me for a commission for a piece I don't mind helping them out but I don't really have time to make things for other people because when I'm making something it's usually for a YouTube video and then when I'm done making it I got to edit the YouTube video and then I got to put the YouTube video out and then the next thing you know I'm working on another project for another YouTube video I don't really have time to make things for other people but also when I do make things for other people I have to be a perfectionist and I have to get things right and precise and make sure they look good because I don't want to upset anybody. That just takes a lot more time to do. Whereas me, I'm like, oh, I didn't weave in my ends. Eh, that's fine. I'll do it eventually. I'm not worried about it. Not really big into selling things for people. And then like the whole shipping and dealing with like prices and shipping and all that stuff. A headache. Are there any hobbies that you thought you enjoy but realize you didn't once you tried it? Knitting. I did try to knit. I didn't really like it just because you have to really pay attention and focus. And I can't really do that. If I was trying to knit this while talking to y'all, it would be a mess because I would not be paying attention. I like crocheting because you do one thing at a time and you move on. So if you make a mistake, you'd be like, oh, well, I just made a stake one back. I don't got to tear the whole thing apart. Another thing is painting. I did try to paint something years ago. It was like a, like a paint by number that you could print off and then you print it onto like the clear sheets that you would put on a projector, like in the olden days, in the nineties. I had did that. I'm looking at it right now. I started it four years ago. I would like to finish it because it is taunting me. If Timmy stopped making ice cap, what's your next favorite drink or would you make your own. Well, for this one, I would probably go over to Starbucks and spend all my money there. Happened back in March. 
February when Tim Hortons ice caps tasted like peanut butter for some reason so they had to take it off the menu for like two weeks and I had to spend all my money at Starbucks and it was not fun and yes I have actually tried to make my own a month or two ago I could not drive my car for three days because the uh the steering fluid was uh, leaking and I couldn't steer my car but anywho I couldn't drive anywhere so I couldn't drive to get an ice cap because where I live uh there is no Timmy's around for kilometers if I wanted to spend the whole day walking to a Tim Hortons probably could have got one but I wasn't going to do that I actually did make my own. It was a little bitter because I wasn't too sure what I was doing, but it turned out pretty okay. And if I had to, I probably would start making my own if it came to that, because I cannot spend money on Starbucks every day. What is your favorite dinosaur? The T-Rex. I don't know why, because when you think about it, Land Before Time really messed you up. Like I can't watch that first one because one, it is too sad. And second, those um, sharp tooths are terrifying, but somehow T-Rexes are my favorite dinosaur. What is the easiest and hardest things I've made so far? The hardest thing that I've had to make was the Hellfire sweater because I had to make an image that took a really long time to figure out and then crocheting it I had to be very precise and figure out where things go I've had to take it apart a few times so that was pretty hard to do the easiest thing I have to say anything with a granny square in it granny squares are so easy to make and then you just have to attach them together I love anything with a granny square and I really want to make another granny square cardigan or sweater for the fall so yeah I think anything with a granny square because you can make them super fast and then you can just like attach them all together are there any projects that I'm intimidated by doing or that I've put off? I guess sewing some sewing projects that I really want to do. I really want to make like a cape coat and I just I keep putting that off but maybe maybe I'll do that shortly. Crocheting projects usually if it's in my head I want to do it and then I end up doing it. What is my favorite item that I have ever thrifted? Probably my yellow winter coat. I know it's a very basic item. It's very special to me. I thrifted it back in I think 2016 I think and it was literally like right after I had spent almost $200 on a professional looking winter coat and then I ended up finding this yellow coat at a thrift store for like $10 and I was like oh my god you're coming home with me and the reason why it's very special is because first off it's a yellow coat and I absolutely love it but on the back tag it actually had this woman's name and I'm like huh I wonder who she is I looked her up and it turns out she had passed away that summer and someone like donated her things including this coat I don't know how I found out but I found out where she was buried <laughs> and it it turns out it's the same cemetery also like I love ghost cemeteries and all that jazz but it was the same cemetery that is one my favorite cemetery and it is a cemetery that I drive by I usually when I go for like my little ice cap drives I drive by it constantly so the fact that like I found this that belonged to this woman that is currently buried at my favorite cemetery I think it was kind of special kind of neat and also this coat was the coat that started my coat obsession before that I owned one coat and I only needed one coat after I found this yellow coat every year I probably buy two three coats jackets winter jackets the next part of it is what is my favorite social media platform between instagram youtube and tiktok i think my favorite is probably tiktok just because i love just watching you know quick videos and i like making content for it because literally it could be about anything i used to really like instagram but instagram is just so like it's boring nowadays and usually when i have to take a photo i have to like caption it with something and i have to like take a good photo you know it's not early instagram days where you could just take a photo have a sandwich and post it and be like lunch and get a bunch of likes for it. YouTube I love but it's where I can you know share my passion my editing like you know like making videos editing content creating and everyone like you know can enjoy it and watch it what is my least favorite thing about crocheting probably math the math part like this one here I hope the math is I hope it's right I don't like doing the math for a project I don't like figuring out if it has to be this and I'm doing double crochets or half double or single and I'm using this thickness of yarn and I'm using this hook how is that going to work out in the end and then usually I, I say I make something like this and then I realize it's too small or it's too big and then I gotta undo it all and then I gotta redo it to figure out that that one's also wrong so figuring out the math I always hate doing that one but like you know once I figured it out all the other projects are super easy because I can just look at my notes if I remember to write them down and the other part of this is what is my favorite crochet stitch you know what it was a single crochet I know it's a very basic one but I have to say as of lately the half double that's what I'm doing right now half double is where it's at it's my favorite I know it's nothing fancy and then when it comes into like more intricate stitches I haven't really done a lot but I have done the waffle stitch and I I really like doing the waffle stitch I would love to make a, a sweater or a sweater vest or a cardigan with a waffle stitch so I do like that but overall 
half double. I like the half double. How have I been recently? And what do you do if you get burnt out creatively? I have honestly been the happiest that I have been in years. Part of it is probably because I am not in a relationship. You know, it just makes me happy that I can wear whatever I want. Also, the guy did not like having me having short hair and I can cut my hair however I want to. Also, the whole like, you know, my YouTube and how it's growing, that makes me really happy because then maybe one day I don't have to work a part-time job. I can just do YouTube full-time. But yeah, like honestly, lately, I have been just super happy for some reason. And normally, like, you know, I'm, I'm a little sad here and there. What do I do when I get burnt out? Usually I switch projects. When I'm kind of tired of crocheting, I can't really think of any ideas. I'll switch up and I'll go back into sewing. Also, I do try to take time. Like sometimes I just take an entire day where all I do is just sit and just uh, watch TikToks. And usually do those days are when I post a video to YouTube and then I don't really have any editing or any filming that day. I'll just lay in bed and just watch TV and watch TikToks. TikToks. It calms me down. I don't have to like worry about anything. And then it kind of gives my brain, I guess, a little bit of relaxing time to uh, kind of think of other ideas that I want to do. And then when I think of that idea, I get really super excited about it. And then I, uh, I got to do it. So it's kind of like two questions. First one is which stitches are the best for cardigans? I guess it all depends on what your what type of cardigan you're making. I try to double. I don't really like it. I really, really like how the half double looks like, like, look how far I've gotten so far. You know, it's not too thick of a stitch. I just, I don't know. I do like the half double. I also like the single. And then I also really love granny square cardigans. So, and then the other one was just some advice for crocheting. Okay. So I would have to say if you're getting into crocheting, buy yourself probably like a five millimeter crochet hook and then buy yourself like four medium weight yarn. It's the easiest to work with. And there's a lot of patterns that like have to deal with this yarn. Because if you buy thinner yarn or thicker yarn, when you try to do a project that they're trying to tell you that you have to use a certain like a medium yarn for, your project's not going to really turn out royal. So like I know all the projects that I've done all use the same yarn, but I always find that I learn the best when I'm making something. So, you know, maybe start off making some washcloths, you know, just some simple square washcloths. You can probably make that out of cotton yarn. Just something simple just to, you know, figure out crocheting. That way, you know, if you have to take it apart, it's not a big deal. You make a sweater and you mess up and you got to take a whole arm apart. That's going to like uh, destroy you a little bit mentally, which has happened to me. And once you learn the three main stitches, which is the the single, half double, and double, I'll put the British terms here, you pretty much can make anything because a lot of times like a certain stitch, it will look fancy, but it's like you got to use a half double and a double to accomplish that. So definitely learn your basic stitches before you move on to anything too complicated. What was my very first crochet make? Probably a square. <laughs> Actually in, uh, in this I have something. This. This is the Tunisian, Tunisian, I can never say it right, stitch. And I made a hat that went like this. This is actually kind of cute. What's so funny is this kind of reminds me of that uh, granny square balaclava that I've made. It's like kind of like that same shape. I'm pretty sure this yarn I probably bought at the Dollarama. Yeah, I used to buy my yarn at the Dollarama because I had absolutely no money. So this is what my early work looked like. This and like cat scarves and cat hats the cats needed things. Down to the last question. If I could live outside Canada, where would I go? I don't know, to be quite honest. I don't think I ever want to live somewhere outside Canada, mainly because Canada is just has everything that I need. Maybe somewhere in like the UK and like one of those little cottages or something. But truth be told, I think I would rather just stay in Canada. I really just want to live in like Northern Ontario, maybe even BC or out east but i just want to live in a cute little cabin in a cute little small town that i can like ride my bike to and get bread and that there's a tim hortons because i need my ice caps and live in a cute little a-frame house with a bunch of cats probably alone because that's where i think my life is headed and that's fine you know somewhere like that where there's not a lot of tourists because i hate tourists somewhere where i can still go thrifting and create my youtube videos that is all the questions thank you very much for everyone who asked sometimes when I do these now a lot of people ask me questions so I'm really glad people ask me questions this time and this is so far I got this is gonna be the back piece to a vest that I am currently working on that will do it for this video if you're new to my channel like sewing crafting crocheting and thrifting why not hit the subscribe button you can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok which is the same fancy dinosaur tea party I think that is it so y'all have a good day now